Hello everyone. So from this session, we would be starting our discussion on another very popular library for data visualization, which is the Seaborn library. Now Matplotlib and the Seaborn somehow beautifully connected to each other. Seaborn is another Python data visualization library and it provides an excellent interface for the pandas to work with the matplotlib library you can say that with the help of cban with the help of cborn library and you can use the data data frame or the pandas and the matplotlib together more efficiently and effectively let's see how this works now there are certain imports that you need to do if you are using cborn one, you need to import pandas because that is the core crux behind using the seaborn. Two, you need to import matplotlib for the additional customization that you might like to do in your plots. And then the seaborn for plotting and styling purposes, which would be which we will import as SNS. To import seaborn as SNS, SNS is the context for seaborn. The way the PLT is the context for matplotlib and PD is the context for pandas. Seaborn provides built in themes for styling the matplotlib graphics, and that is where it scores above the matplotlib library. It helps in visualizing both univariate as well as the bivariate data. It helps in fitting in and visualizing the linear regression models better than the matplotlib library alone. The plotting of statistical time series data becomes better and more effective and efficient visualizations can be done with the help of the Seaborn library. And the biggest advantage of Seaborn is that it works wonderfully well with the NumPy and especially with the Pandas data structure. As discussed above, it's a powerful interface to use Pandas and the Matplotlib together and create some excellent visualizations. Let's take an example. Let's start with the scatter plot. To make a scatter plot, you need to make the necessary imports, which include the import of the C1 and the matplotlib. Let's assume these are the height values. The height list and the list of weights are given. And I want to create a scatter plot between X and Y, that is the heights and weight. That would be SNS.scatterplot. SNS is the context for the C1 library. And then we want to make scatter plot x is equal to height and y is equal to height. and then finally we go ahead with the plt dot show if you want to produce a count plot you want to count a particular set of gender let's say for example then again pick the necessary imports whatever imports you want to put up let's say the gender we have one female then another female then female then female then all the males now you want to see that how many people are there with female as a gender and male as a gender. So you need to use the count plot function. So that becomes the SNS dot count plot x equal to gender. And this will tell you the number of males and the females that are there in the list. So simple. Importing of data sets is very easy with the help of the Seaborn library. There are a lot of data sets which are by default available in the Seaborn for your practice and for, for uh, understanding the working of the various Seaborn functions. So, how to do that? You need to first use the load underscore dataset function and then need to import Seaborn as SB. Now, SB is the context for loading the Seaborn datasets, which are by default available in the library. To import the required data set, let's say tips is one of the default data set which is available in the C1 library. So I will use df is equal to sb dot load underscore data set. And I want to load the tips database. So load underscore data set is the function that you need. And tips is the data set that I want to use which is available by default in the C1 library. And print df dot head, this will print the top five rows of the data set which 
can see here okay. that's the first row the second row the third row the fourth row as i told earlier that these are basically the indexes and the python starts from index 0 so the first row is given the address index 0 then index 1 then index 2 and so on similarly the last row would be minus 1 index if you want to start from the last then minus 1 represents the last row in the data set so these are the following columns in our data the total bill the tips the sex or the genders the smokers whether the person is a smoker or not the day of the week the time and the size now to there are certain other data sets as well that can you can see and use for your own practice and to get the list of data set this is the certain command that can be used so print sb dot get underscore data set name and you will get the following data set data sets so please uh, understand that we are for the time being using the tips data sets uh, tips uh, data set as an example now uh, before we move ahead and understand the meaning of hue let us so far uh, appreciate the codes in our interface so first of all we need to make the necessary imports so we are importing the matplotlib and the c1 so sns is the context for c1 and then for scatter plot you need to mention the x and y parameter here height is x weight is y and then finally we need to the sns dot scatter plot function and pld dot show so if you click it or you run this code uh sorry there is a little error sorry uh i forgot to run the function yeah so now i have since i have uh, I, i'm done with the necessary imports and now if i will run it i can see a beautiful scatter plot it seconds it's so here is our scatter plot okay simple now if you wish to go for count plot then uh, i wish to count the number of males and the females in my data so i need to use the sns dot uh, counter plot function so i need to count the gender so x is gender and if i run this then let's see what comes so that's the gender so now you can see the number of females are four in my data set number of males are Six in my data set. Simple, isn't it? Then, uh, as I told you, that there are a lot of inbuilt databases that you can see in the C1 library, for which you need to import C1 as SB, and then you can load the relevant data set. So we are using the TIFFS data set, or we will be using the TIFFS data set for our learning, and for your practice, you can start with any sort of data set you like. So let us do the necessary putting of data sets and yeah, this is our data set. Okay. The same example which I have shown you. Now let us uh, make it better. Let us let us try to introduce a third variable into the above examples. So let's say I want to uh, with my tips data set, I want to actually visualize three variables. Now Visualization of third variable is possible with the help of the hue parameter. To use the hue parameter, you need to first make the necessary imports of the matplotlib and the cbon library. Always remember that since cbon provides you the styling and the plotting functions for matplotlib only, so the matplotlib import is very necessary. So when we were plotting the basic scatter plot, we use this command. So sns dot scatter plot. Let's say for example, I want to plot between total bill and the amount of tip. X is total bill, y is tip, and data is df, which we have uh, imported above, uh, uh, which we have imported in the last slide as shown. So this will give you a simple uh, scatter plot. X axis total bill and y axis the amount of tip. You can see as the total bill increases, the amount of tips also tend to now let's say i want to uh, visualize another third variable along with these two variables let's say the smoker variable so i can introduce a hue variable here 
SNS dot scatter plot, X remains same, the Y remains same, data is my DF, and hue is equal to smoker. Now this will introduce another third variable into my plot, and you can see on the right hand side, X axis total bill, Y axis step, and then the data has been filtered according to the smokers and the non-smoker. The blue dots are the people who are the smoker who are not the smokers. And the orange dots are the people who are the smoker. We can see that with with the increase in total bills, it's mostly the non-smokers that are providing. More. That's the level of visualization you can done with the help of your parameter. To make it further better, you can also uh, introduce the hue order. Now, by default, it has taken the no first and the yes later on, uh, or as a second option. If you want, you can take yes as a first option and no as a second option. You specify the order so you need to introduce an extra function so hue smoker and then there is an additional function that you need which is hue underscore order so i want to first place the less yes values and after yes i want to place the no values and then finally i will go for plt dot show and you can see here in the diagram that it has been changed this diagram the no values were listed first here the yes values have been listed so that's the power of Q parameter, which can really give some brilliant visualizations to your plots. You can specify hue colors as well. So uh, by default, it has taken these colors. Okay, I have not given any specification of color. So if you wish, uh, you can uh, provide certain colors as well. Like for example, I want yes to be colored as black and no to be colored as red so i have initiated a dictionary here the curly brackets so dictionary so yes is the key holding the value of black and no is the key holding the value equal to red once i have done this necessary uh, necessary definition uh, again i will use the scatter plot function which includes my x values y values the data the hue the hue order and i will use a palette function which is equal to hue underscore colors, which I have just defined above. You call the plt dot show, and this is how the plot will come to you. Okay. So now, since you have uh, parameterized yes as black, so all the yes values have been marked as black, and all the no values have been marked as. This is how you can set a hue order as well, and along with the hue order, you can specify the hue colors. There are a lot of colors that you can specifically work. You can work with red, purple, yellow, black, white, and this is the matplotlib names. So these are the names that you have to use if you want to uh, the colors. And these are the abbreviations. Instead of uh, using the entire word blue, you can use B as well. Instead of writing complete red, you can simply write R as well. Or if you don't want to use name or matpl matplotlib abbreviation, then you can mention the HTML codes as well. So with the help of code, the library will automatically understand what color you want to have. So uh, that much for this session. And keep plotting, keep practicing.